Is the world ready for Carnage? Here's your look at the Diamond Select Toys. This is the Premier Collection Carnage Resin Statue. Created from an alien being known as Venom, the Carnage symbiote is an amorphous life form that can bond with a host, granting it superhuman powers. In a twist of fate that could spell disasters for innocents around the world, Carnage symbiote encountered and bonded with Cletus Cassidy, an unstable and dangerous criminal. With the symbiote's strength and Cassidy's ferocity, Carnage became a threat unlike any other, kept in check only by heroes like the amazing Spider-Man. This approximately 12-inch tall resin statue of Carnage is based on his comic book appearance and features high level of detail and exacting paint applications. It is very limited to only 3,000 copies worldwide. It was designed by Joe Allard and sculpted by Alejandro Pereira. Before we get a closer look at the symbiotic psychopath, the very first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the Premier Collection Carnage actually stands. Now, I'm only taking it to the top of his head. I'm sure many of you are looking at this currently and thinking, why wouldn't I take it to the top tendril? After all, that would be the highest point. Well, based on that, you would be correct. But let me just stop this for a second and explain what I did. I took it only to the top of his head because technically all those tendrils are things that you have to add after the fact. Let me just put some reassurance in mind. If you had a bit of brow sweat forming, you can wipe that away right now. No, you didn't have to take it out of the box with all the tendrils intact, running the risk of potentially breaking any number of them. No, you actually have to add these after the fact. So based on that, the idea that you can leave these off in their entirety if you want to, or depending on where you decide to place them, though placing of them can be a little bit more limited by choices, it still will dictate how tall the statue actually stands. Does that make any sense? I hope so. According to the t trusty tape measure of mine, you're looking at the Premier Collection of Carnage standing 10 inches exactly. And switching that to centimeters, you're looking at the statue standing 25.4 or 25 and a half centimeters tall. Thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select who took the time and provided this sample of the Premier Collection Carnage that we're going to look at over the span of this review. If you're in the market of adding Carnage to your own personal collection and think to yourself, I'll procrastinate, I'll pick it up a little bit later, 3,000 copies worldwide stretched across the span of the globe may seem like a high number, but by the time you eventually get around to, I'll pick them up a little bit later, you may find that Carnage has gone just like that. So you may not want to procrastinate too long adding this little bad boy to your own personal collection. I say a little bad boy, he's got some considerable size going for him. He's also comprised of resin. And two things go hand in hand, didn't mean to startle you, when you pick up a resin piece for yourself. One end, you get a quite considerably heavier statue than some of the other gallery statues that are made of PVC plastic. On the other hand, one of the problems that go along with this being resin is the fact that there is potential breakage on some of the smaller, thinner components to carnage. One good thing is at least the tendrils that we're looking at on the statue are things, first of all, you can add after the fact. And again, they seem to be made of metal. So that's one thing that you don't have to worry about breaking. We'll talk about that in a second as well. Getting the statue picked up, it's hard to really gauge it unless you physically hold this in hand, how heavy the statue actually is. So try to, your best to gauge it from this review. I'm going to pick up Carnage. As you can see, he's perched atop of what seems to be a rooftop point of some sort of cathedral. It's a really neat way that they've depicted this. As you can see, there's a nice detailed ram on the front who almost seems to be sporting a beard. Could he be perhaps part human, part ram? Maybe I'm creating this story in the back of my mind, but it's really nicely detailed when it's all said and done. The point of the cathedral, the rooftop, is made from a family of grays. A more medium gray makes the majority of the color, and then you've got panel outlines here in a darker gray with some nice lighter grays added to the detailed areas of the ram's head. Really like the way that that turned out. One small touch, and certainly one I wanted to point out, is apparently the impact of Carnage landing to the roof was so hard of an impact that it actually caused cracking. And I really like the way they've done that as well. I don't know if you can actually see it, but it looks like they've speckled and flecked paint against the surface of it. So it kind of gives it like a stone, a stone look. I really like 
the way that that turned out as well. One thing that I really was not expecting, if you spin the statue around very carefully, the back is fully finished. This is certainly not something I would have expected to see, uh, primarily because this is something that's going to be sitting against your wall anyways. But they spent just as much time detailing the, the back of the statue as they did to the front. You've got these little random areas of cracks. Certainly there's a lot of cracks here located on the back as well. And they've added again that lighter gray dusting, just brushing to the edges of it. So all those individual brick textures stand out. One thing you certainly will want to be careful of though is this weather vane, this point that sticks out from the top of the roof. Being again, it's resin and it's such a thin sculpt to it. This could most definitely break if you're not careful. So you want to be really careful of that. Some nice, real cool detailing done to the weather vane. Very thin in design, of course. There's not too elaborate of a design. They probably could have added some additional kind of gothic look to the top of the point. But overall, like it's a neat looking base when it's all said and done. Now, when you get Carnage, he's basically attached to it by pegs. I only say that because I noticed on the one side here, this one foot was attached by like a rectangular peg that sat inside the hole. I did get this guy out of the box and I noticed that the foot wasn't completely inside that hole. So I had to very carefully kind of navigate the foot back in place and plug that back in. You may not even have that issue at all. But just know that it does seem like Carnage is a separate piece. And not to say that you would want to be trying to take him off of the rooftop, because that's the thing that's really only keeping him in place. Speaking of keeping him in place, if I can show you here, he is really only technically attached by his feet. There's a lot of empty space that's formed underneath his body. None of his arms or anything is attaching itself to the rooftop. So it's really, again, just his feet keeping it in place. That can, of course, be something you want to be very careful of. But the trade-off, though, it's still pretty cool to look at, especially when you see it from the side. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about Carnage's tendrils. When I did get this guy out of the box, as I mentioned, these were all separate pieces. And as you can see, they are made of metal. I don't think you could have pulled off the same thing using these as resin because obviously based on the shape and the thickness of these, these would most definitely have broken. Sadly, I've got a little bit of paint that's flaked off a few of these, so you sort of can see underneath it, yes, they are all made of metal. I wouldn't probably advise the idea of repeatedly pulling these out from their sockets and putting them in different places. Sort of decide early on whereabouts you want to have them. There's also, it seems, a unique place to put them. Like, you can't put them in any, any hole that you find. For example, some of them, like this one here, fits better in this hole. But if you pull, like, this one out, this one has a smaller hole, and there's absolutely no way you'd be able to fit that in. Uh, you do get six of these, at least I got six tendrils, and yet there's seven holes on the, on the statue's body. Like, for example, spin this around. There's one area that I've sort of left off for the time being. He's got a slot located on the back of his calf. Now that fits fine for like this shape. The one that lo was located on the top of his shoulder fits perfectly in place there. But for me, my own personal preference, I don't really like the idea of having Carnage with two tendrils sticking out from his thigh and his leg. So I'll sort of decide for myself. I'm going to take this one and instead put it up at the top here. You can only do so much mixing and matching because, again, the shapes aren't the exact same across the board. Some smaller pegs, for example, may work a little bit better on his areas of his shoulders, for example. But then again, it's just, again, mixing and matching, deciding what works best for you. What I would suggest, though, is all the removing and pulling these out, you're also going to be causing damage to the hole. Keeping in mind, Carnage is comprised of resin, so you don't want to repeatedly, constantly pull these out, as you're probably starting to chip away the area around the hole, and you're making the hole a little bit larger. It may cause then, the time that you go back to put the tendril in place, the hole doesn't seem to hold it as well, because you've constantly put the tendril in and out, and swapping it around at different areas and different places on his body. Tendrils aside, certainly let's get a closer look at Carnage's face. I do make some apologies in advance, though, in case some of these do fall out, because I don't think the intended plan is to pick up the statue and start turning it around with your hands. Anyways, let's get a closer look at the head sculpt. I'm really happy with what Diamond did here. The teeth, one of my favorite aspects, as you can see, are clear. They've airbrushed in a transition of color. The dark black that starts kind of where his lips would be if he had lips. You can see they've transitioned that into each one of the sharp fangs that stick out from the tops and the bottoms of his teeth. It kind of reminds me a bit like a Venus flytrap. 
this guy does have a lot of color considering really he's really all red. It's the black that really makes those details stand out. I do also like the tongue that they did as well. Very classic looking carnage. You can almost even make out that there would be tonsils rooted at the back of his mouth, but I wouldn't go too close if I was you. Uh, one other thing I really like about the eyes is normally, of course, Carnage does have white eyes, but they went in and they airbrushed this nice blue that's just around the outer area. I mean, from a distance, you almost wouldn't even see it, but it's just those small little touches of detail that enhance the overall sculpting of the statue. One thing I always really liked about Carnage was that he was a stark contrast to Eddie Brock's Venom. Venom was a big brooding beast dressed all in his black symbiote costume, while Cassidy, on the other hand, adopting the symbiote of Carnage, was a more lankier, more deadlier killer, as his costume allowed him the ability to morph and change its shape, as you can see here on the axe formed on the end of his arm. His colors were also a lot brighter represented here in almost a fire truck red and I'm glad to see that Diamond didn't feel the need to add unnecessary shadowing. I feel adding the additional shadowing or shade to the coloring, he's got a little bit here on his neck and just a little on his arm, but if they had added too much I feel it would have pulled a lot away from the dark black webbing as you can see that stretched across his entire body. The pattern work is very intricate as you can see and it changes a lot as you ch turn and rotate the statue. None of it is symmetrical either. If you even look at his back, the left side doesn't match the right side at all. As I did say though, he has the ability to morph and alter his shape. I'm glad to see also that they did incorporate that into the statue. As you can see on the one hand, he has the sharp talons. Each of his individual fingers are sharp to the touch. They're not prickly, but you can certainly feel that there's a point on each one of the fingers. And as I said, on the other side, you can see that they've crafted it to look like his arm has extended out and created this almost makeshift battle axe with some additional webbing that's running across that as well. I like the detailing that they've really done to this, as you can see here. It's not even a smooth to the touch either. There's a lot of very intricate little sculpts it almost looks like vein work. It almost even looks like his fingers have extended out, distorted, and then turned into this giant battle axe. It's really neat the way that they've done this. As a premier collection release of Carnage, I feel it checks off all the boxes I would want to see in a statue of Cletus Cassidy. For starters, nice touch on Diamond's part to sculpt him on top of what I'm guessing to be is a rooftop of a cathedral. Could be somebody's house as well, maybe the Adams family. Whatever the case, they posed him perfectly so it looks like he's about to leap off the rooftop and strike on somebody that's further down below on the streets. A real, again, nice touch the way that they've done that. By keeping also the base all primarily in dark grays, does even maybe even make more of the statues stand out, the vibrant red colors that he has. I also like that the colors weren't competing with anything else. Venom, I think you could incorporate some blues and some purples for highlights and lowlights. Carnage, just keep it the way it is. That bright red works so well on its own, and adding unnecessary shadowing to it would most definitely distract and pull away from the statue. So I'm glad to see that Diamond didn't feel the need to do that, and kept it just the OG colors the way it should be. It also allows that black webbing to really pop on this particular figure. I like also the details done to the face by having that transition of black from the lip area into the more clear colors of his fangs. The only thing that's a bit of a hardship on this particular statue, a bit of a problem is adding those tendrils. Thank goodness that they're done in metal so I don't have to worry about them breaking as if they would if it was the case if they were resin, but still they're difficult to put in at times. Most of them I've been able to actually root inside the hole perfectly fine. There's a few of them though, especially the one at the top shoulder. I just can't quite get that completely in the hole. And a lot of times resulting when I move the statue, a few of them do come off from time to time. At least I can put them back in place, but I would say this to anybody that's looking to pick up this one for themselves. Don't be moving around those tendrils and putting them in different places on a regular basis. Keeping in mind the body is still comprised of resin, you don't want to wear away that hole too much that becomes too loose, that doesn't even hold the tendril then in place. Sort of decide where you want to put them. Put them in place and sort of leave them be. And when you leave them be, you've got yourself a pretty fine looking carnage that you can put on your display shelf. 
Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the new Diamond Select Premier Collection Carnage Resin Statue. I'd also like to send out a big thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select who took the time and sent this sample my way. If you guys are liking the content you're seeing on this channel and haven't yet had a chance to do so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of videos coming your way. We're also going to be having a look at some more Diamond Select releases and statues. So if that is your fancy, as I said, stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of videos coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.